Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. Tonight we're back in Duelist for another daily challenge, and here we are. It looks like we're Songhai versus Abyssian. Let's take a look at what the board has for us. And exactly as expected. So we have Cassava with 13 health, and she looks to have a Ghost Azalea, which gives her plus one attack for each friendly shadow creep. She has an Abyssal Juggernaut, who has a plus one, plus one for every shadow creep. And of course there is this one shadow creep here, so it's a 4-4. Four, four. And then a Provoke Klaxon, who's 6-6, six, six, and when he dies, he turns six other squares into Shadow Creep. Uh, for our own part, we are Kalios with 19 health. Uh, we don't have any artifacts, but we do have our Bloodborne spell, which allows us to teleport minions up to two spaces. We have this little battle pet, Ace. It's ranged, 1-2. Uh, and then it looks like an exhausted Onyx Jaguar, 3-3, three, three, and whenever a minion moves, it gets a plus one, plus one. That's the effect that uh, the Onyx Jaguar has. For our action bar, we have a Sol, who when you play him, the opening gambit is he activates a battle pet. Uh, Phoenix Fire, three damage to a minion or a general. And by the way, that's any minion or general. Uh, Saber Spine Seal. Gives a minion or general plus three attack, and I'm assuming, because really it looks like, well, with the activation of the battle pet, that we're probably going to end up bu uh, buffing ace. Crimson Coil, two damage to a minion, and we activate battle pets again. All, it's going to be all about ace. We have a Crescent Spear. Not only does it give uh, Kaleos plus one, but it also means that all of our offensive spells do one extra damage. And then a Mana Vortex, which reduces the cost of the next spell to one. Now, hold on, let's just see. We have nine, right? So one, two, three. I don't think we actually need this, to be, to be perfectly honest. Because look, it's six plus three, that's nine. Uh, we're not going to, we have enough. This, this is sort of a superfluous card, I think. But uh, in any case, so that's our board position. Remember, we get two restarts because third time's the charm, but let's just take a look and think through this. So, if assuming for a second that we have to clear the board, Klaxon has to die first, uh, die second. And the reason for that is, if he dies and six squares turn into Shadow Creep, this thing becomes a 10-10, and there is no way we're going to get rid of it off the board. As it stands, right... Some pretty preliminary simple plays are we give the artifact and then we use Saber Spine Seal to buff Ace. Okay? Now Ace is at a 4 2. Kaleo says at a 3 19. That's fine, whatever. Uh, but more importantly, he now does an extra 1 damage with all of his offensive spell, which means that Phoenix Fire now does 4 damage. Okay? Crimson Coil now does 3 damage. So those are the, the two big things. Now, let's just think through this a little bit more. We need to get Ace away from the Provoke, because otherwise he's just going to start feeding all of his damage straight into the Provoke, which is where the Bloodborne spell comes in. However, if we move him two squares, right? So let's say we teleport him here, right? He's just going to go straight to the face on Cassava. She has three damage at the moment. She's going to kill him immediately, right? So we have to find a place where we can put him where he's going to run around and not necessarily hit anything in the face immediately. And here's the thing, there isn't a space like that because look, right? We're not gonna do it, we're gonna cancel out of this, but any one of these squares means that the moment he's activated, he will run up to some minion, right? Even if he's here, he will either run up to Klaxon or Cassava, try and attack them, despite the fact that he's ranged, he will move on every turn. This is just a simplistic battle pet AI and die immediately so we can't do that so what that really means is we do have to clear the board now let's think about this for a second we know he's going to get activated twice we know he's going to move twice which means that he is going to be a 6-2 because of the onyx jaguar in fact he's going to be a 7-2 because we're going to move him with blink so that's one movement with blink he's going to be 5-2 one movement on his first activation 6-2 one movement on his second activation, 7-2, okay? Let's assume for a second that he's going to go both times to the face on Cassava. 6 plus 7, right? Those are the last two uh, attack numbers that he's going to have. 6 plus 7 is 13, okay? That's enough to take care of her. 
What that means, by the way, is that the rest of our, well, really, these two offensive spells should be channeled straight into the face of these two minions to make sure that they do not interfere with Ace. Okay? And remember, Klaxon has to die last. So, let's think about this. We have a Phoenix Fire, which does four. It should do three, but we have the artifact, and that gives us plus one damage. So four, we can get rid of the Abyssal Juggernaut. Then, our Crimson Coil does three damage. Okay? Now, that's not enough, because that's only half health, but Kaleos has three damage. Okay? So here's what I'm thinking. We Phoenix Fire on the Juggernaut. Okay? Then... Kaleos hits Klaxon, okay? Now, one thought is, we can do three damage directly here and kill Klaxon, but look at where Ace is. If we do that, Ace activates, he's going to run two, try and hit Kasvit in the face, and die almost immediately. So instead, we're going to blink him as far away as possible, right? Which means that now he's going to have two turns. He's going to run one, two. That's going to be his first attack. Then he's going to run one, two. He's going to have a second attack, then he's going to, well, die, maybe not die. Depends on sort of how the, 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 the order of operations here works. But, all I'm saying, he's going to get his 6 plus 7 attack off. And in fact, he's going to survive because, like, he's already at 3 health. Okay? So, now, the Crimson Coil, we get rid of the Provoke. Okay? It's gone. It's dead. Now, Casper's at 9. Who cares? Nobody cares. Okay? He's now down to 7 health. Look... Ace is at 6. Next turn, or next step, we play Saul. We activate Ace again. He moves one more time. He becomes a 7-5. Shoots Cassivan in the face. And that's it. Okay. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. It, the, it took a little bit of puzzling out, not puzzling out, I guess reasoning out, what order the enemy minions had to die to make sure that you didn't play yourself into a corner and to make sure that Ace was able to get both attacks off. And it just takes a little bit of sort of forward thinking to plan out what the total damage that you could potentially have on the board is, and then executing on the plan. Uh, all, overall, very fun, very interesting. If you guys enjoyed this, like, comment, everything's welcome. And in any case, I'll see you all next time.